The Eurozone's economic recovery weakened this month according to new figures released Monday. The closely watched Composite Purchasing Managers Index dropped to 52.4 in January from 53.3 in December. It's one of the lowest numbers since last February and below analyst projections. A resurgent health crisis is largely to blame. Many European authorities have encouraged people to stay home and avoid socialising. The restrictions have hurt the bloc's dominant services industry, which fell to a nine-month low but was still in growth. There was better news from Germany. Businesses in Europe's largest economy expanded at their fastest rate in four months. The country's manufacturing sector has been helped by easing supply chain bottlenecks. France was a different story though. Business growth there slowed more than forecast due to the health crisis and inflationary pressure. Consumers around the Eurozone have felt the cost of that inflation with prices rocketing. The bloc's Composite Output Prices Index matched the high of November's survey. It also comes after the region's inflation hit a record high last month. Good morning. Today marks the one-year anniversary of Joe Biden swearing in and the one-year anniversary... Biden ramps up criticism of GOP in news conference marking his first year. President Biden escalated his partisan rhetoric Wednesday during his first news conference in 10 months, laying the blame for his stalled agenda at the feet of Republicans and suggesting on the eve of his one-year anniversary that he has been surprised by their intransigence. I honest to God don't know what they're for, Biden said at one point during his nearly two-hour exchange with reporters. What is their agenda? He said the GOP is thoroughly cowed by former President Donald Trump. Did you ever think that one man out of office could intimidate an entire party where they're unwilling to take any vote? Biden asked. The shift intensified a harsher tone that Biden has taken this year toward Republicans, starting with an address commemorating the January 6 Capitol assault and continuing in Georgia last week with a blistering address suggesting that those who do not support the current voting rights bills will be remembered in history alongside such notorious racists as Jefferson Davis, the leader of the Confederacy. The sharp critique represents a major shift from Biden's message during the presidential campaign when he said that Republicans would have an epiphany and that partisan gridlock would ease if he took office. And it signals a shift from an inaugural year focused on congressional action to a hard-fought election year with control of Congress at stake. Biden also offered unvarnished thoughts about Russia's intentions toward Ukraine, suggesting that President Vladimir Putin would probably invade the country. He suggested the U.S. response would be different if Moscow launches a minor incursion versus a massive ground invasion, causing a furor that quickly prompted the White House to clarify that he was distinguishing a military and non-military assault. Biden, at times, tried to steer the conversation to these wins. Prominent women's rights activist Amira Osman has been detained in a nighttime raid on her home in Sudan's capital Khartoum, her sister said on Sunday. That detention comes amid what activists say has been a campaign of arrests of civil society and pro-democracy figures since a military takeover in October. Amani Osman said masked men in civilian clothing took her sister late on Saturday night in the Al Riyadh neighborhood. They stormed through the door and came into the house. There were so many of them, around 15 men and another 15 outside, carrying guns and Kalashnikovs. The United Nations mission in Sudan said on Twitter it was outraged by Osman's arrest and cited a pattern of violence against women's rights activists. Osman campaigned against the rule of former President Omar al-Bashir. She was arrested in 2013 for refusing to wear a headscarf and was convicted and fined in 2022 for wearing trousers. <laughs> Women played a prominent role in the uprising that overthrew Bashir in 2019. The transitional government that followed repealed the public law order used to regulate women's dress and behavior, though some other restrictive laws remain. Some high-profile political figures have been released since the October 25th coup, 
but activists say others remain in detention and arrests have continued. Sudanese security officials did not immediately respond to a request for comment. There are different scenarios for how the pandemic could play out. WHO head says it is dangerous to assume pandemic is nearing end, but says acute phase could end this year however. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said it was possible for the world to exit the acute phase of the pandemic this year. Speaking at the opening of the WHO Executive Board meeting, Dr. Tedros said since Omicron was first identified a little over nine weeks ago, more than 80 million cases had been reported to the UN agency, more than were reported in the whole of 2020. There are different scenarios for how the pandemic could play out and how the acute phase could end. But it's dangerous to assume that Omicron will be the last variant or that we are in the end game, Dr. Tedros said. The WHO had said conditions are ideal globally for more variants to emerge. However, Tedros was optimistic that with the right course of action, the pandemic could reach a turning point in 2022. It means achieving our target to vaccinate 70% of the population of every country 